All right, um, so today I just wanted to take some time to go over the UT Libraries dams architecture. Um, so for a bit of background, uh, we started on the dams in the spring of 2017, um, and that was for the back end. We ended up um, deploying that and going live with the back end in the summer of 2018. Uh, we started the development for the dam's front end in January of 2019 and then went live to the World Wide Web um, in the summer of 2019. So it's been deployed about a year now and so we've just been in maintenance mode and maintaining it as we go. Um, so as an overview, uh, first I'm going to go over the back end architecture and then go through a demo of what the site looks like. And then I'd like to go over the front end architecture and then do a demo of that. And then I'd like to just go over the integration and how the two systems talk to each other. So without further ado, no drum rolls. Um, this is a, um, a diagram of the architecture of the UTDMs backend. So everything is within this UTDM server, which is a RHEL 7 Tomcat server. We have a Drupal Island or a front end. So this is our custom module, UTDMs module. Um, we're using Fedora, no surprises, um, for our database and we're using Solar for searching. Um, you will see here, I'm gonna switch this to the laser pointer. We have a combo worker down here for our messaging. And I'll go into a little bit more detail about that later when I talk about the integration. Um, Jscape is our SFTP server, which I really like. It has a really nice GUI. Um, and then for all of our task scheduling and cron jobs, we're using Stone Branch agents. Um, so this is about all the pieces from a very high level. Um, so just to go over um, like how the data would come through here. So for example, batch ingest. Um, so we have our our end user who, or curator or whoever, who is already put their files on Jscape uh, for batch ingest. And then they go into the UTDMs module and they submit a form that says it's ready. Um, every five minutes currently, we have a Stormbranch agent checking to see if anything is ready. So it will come over here and if it finds the files, it will let us know in our, IT, our UTDMs module hey, go grab the files and ingest. So it will then grab the files, add them to the Fedora database and index them in Solar. Um, so that's a look at how our backend works. And so I just wanted to show a few things. Um, so this is our Jscape. And so we have bags and ingest, uh, but I was just gonna show the ingest. So for batch ingest, you'll just come in here we have them separated by uh, the names of the collection. So if I wanted to add something to our archeology, span I would add it in a folder here or add my multiple directories here that I'd like to be ingested. Um, and in case you weren't familiar with Stone Branch, I think it's really cool. And this is what it looks like. It is pretty heavyweight, but very powerful. Um, so you'll see here, I'm currently looking at all the different tasks. And so you can see uh, we have batch ingest for all of our servers. So test, prod, and then mini. And mini is a test server as well and bag it. So all of our tasks are in here and then you can schedule them with triggers and that's what triggers them. And so we'll have one. Um, so like every five minutes, 10 minutes, um, certain time frames, and things like that. Um, so this has been very nice. I really like Stone Branch. And the back end, bright orange, wearing UT colors with pride. Here's our back end. Uh, this is your landing page when you first come to the site. Just so you can see all of our different collections from the top level. Of course, you can just click through it and find an item. And we're just grabbing the first one for simplicity. Um, so this is the object page and so you'll see we have a viewer just so that you're able to get an idea of what it'll look like when it's published. If you click on details, here's an example of what the mods will look like. Um, whoops. We have a flag right here that you might have noticed and so this is actually for publishing to the front end and so it's just a nice little flag that that says it's already been published so it's currently live. Um, and then we have our magical management tab. 
And so on this main page, this is where you're able to publish or unpublish to the front end. If it wasn't published right now, it would say publish instead of unpublish. And then of course we have data streams. And so you're able to come in here and look at all of these. You're able to replace the ones um, from a local copy that you have locally. You can download any of them. The mods you can directly edit within the GUI, which is really convenient. Uh, we are able to regenerate any of the mods that were dynamically generated when it was ingested or just delete them. Um, but here is what the edit page looks like. And so just helpful information as you go. Like what is a title language and why does it have to be three letters? You could click on that and find out. Um, and then the only other thing I wanted to showcase on the back end is the, you'll see the Drupal toolbar up here and you can see a batch edit, batch ingest, the batch ingest queue, mass email, preservation bagging, all of our handy tools are right here. But I really like, yes, we don't actually want to edit the mods. Uh, this is our batch ingest queue. So if you do have a very large um, or several very large batch ingests, you'll want to check on their progress and see how they're doing. And so you're able to come in here and just directly look at that. And you can also search and edit how many um, results there are. And so this is basically just a snapshot of what's in the database and we're just dumping it out here. Um, Yes, cool stuff. That is the back end. Uh, so let me go back to PowerPoint. And now we can look at the front end. Uh, so this is the front end architecture. Uh, we have everything on the front end is Dockerized. And so there is no server. Um, it is all living on our UT library Rancher infrastructure. I uh, really like Rancher, would highly recommend it. Um, but for our front end, we are using a Blacklight, uh, Blacklight, which is Ruby on Rails app. And then we're also using Solar, but it's a different Solar to Solar Cloud um, for our searching. And then we have three different layers that are serving up um, everything that Blacklight needs. So we have Curio, which is holding all of the raw images and the manifests. And then we have Cantaloupe Triple IF, which is the Triple IF image API server. So that's what handles all of the really cool stuff you can do in the mirror door viewer, like um, zooming and changing the colors and making it really bright or um, rotating the image. That API handles all of that magically for us. Um, and then we also have a IIIF manifest generator. And so this is a custom app that we built that you might have guessed it. It generates IIIF manifest. Um, so yeah, that's what that does. It, it'll take in an object and create and spit out that triple IF manifest and we try to build it in a way so that it will be able to not only work for the UTDMs, but we can also use it for um, other applications that might need triple IF manifests. And then because everything is containerized, uh, we do have two mounts. We have a mount that holds the triple IF manifests and then one for all the JP2 derivatives. And lastly, we have a little combo worker here, and that's just part of the Rabbit MQ messaging that we're about to talk about. Uh, that is part of the integration with the backend and how they talk to each other. Um, so now I'm going to exit, and we're going to take a look at the front end. So this is live. If you want to, you can come look at this along with me. Um, this is open to everyone. It is collections.lib.utexas.edu. Um, very long. <laughs> uh, so you'll see here we have a carousel on the front, which is really nice. And down here we have uh, all of our recently added items. Um, so this will be updated as new items are published to the front end. And then popular facets over here. And just to get into the item view, here you can see our viewer. You can zoom into your heart's content and go through the pages and switch if you want it to feel like you're really there and looking at it, you can have it like that. Uh, we have the mods down here. Of, cur of course, we have the burnt orange throughout because it wouldn't be UTs if everything was not orange. Um, and then down here we have, let's see, let me switch it back to image view. Um, you're able to download um, 
so the image is small as a JPEG up to the master file, which for this one is a JPEG. If it is a TIFF, that will be a TIFF there. Um, so you're able to do those. And also the triple IF manifest, you're able to just, it'll straight up open it. And then you can see, there it is, it's living on Curio, like we saw in the diagram. The dots are connecting. Uh, we also have a really handy site tool. So if you're a researcher or student, you have to cite where you found this information. This will be really, really helpful. Uh, they are automatically generated, so you do have to make sure that they're right, though. But most of the work is done for you. Um, also, print this item will just give you a printout of this, this screen. And then download metadata actually is the exact same link as the uh, one within the mirror door viewers. So we're getting the same triple IF manifest here. Uh, so that's the object view. Uh, the only other thing I wanted to show off are our awesome facets. I think that they're really cool and easy to just dive through. If you're just looking around, it's really easy to find cool things. So let's say I only want black and white photographs. And I'm really picky, and I only want 1905 to 1938. So there I can find those. And then, of course, you can add as many as you want. And then once you have multiple, you can remove one. And then it will, of course, sort through those or just completely start over because you did something completely wrong, and there's no way that you can fix your search. <laughs> um, so that is a look at the front end. Very cool, very orange. Okay, so now time for the, the funnest or the most fun part in my opinion was connecting the two of them together. Uh, so this is the integration between the front end and the back end, also known as our publishing process um, because we're publishing uh, our assets from the back end to the front end. And so so like I showed, it's that publish or unpublish button within the Island Dora module here. And so as soon as you click that button, it will first validate that that object has everything proper um, and is able to be published. And once it succeeds at that, it will kick off a message to our RabbitMQ message broker, basically just saying this object wants to be published. And so that message goes back to the back end and it also heads over to our front end. And so it's doing multiple things. So we'll start with the back end. Um, in the back end, this combo worker will go ahead and prepare um, the data to be sent over to the front end. So it's going to grab all the solar fields that are required, and then it will go doop all the way to the solar cloud. And then while that's happening, over on the front end side, we have the combo worker um, that tells the triple IF manifest generator. I need a triple IF manifest for this object. So we'll go ahead and create the JP2 derivatives. It will create the um, triple IF manifest and it will um, add them respectively to the Curio or the Cantaloupe. Um, so all raw images and uh, the manifest will go to Curio and Cantaloupe will have the image. Um, and then those will be ready to be served up to Blacklight and then it will be ready to go. Um, one additional step that we do is we kick off um, uh, we hit the publishing REST API that we have set up, and this isn't on the Jam server or in Rancher. This is just on a UT Python platform. And so it's a very, very simple API that we plan to use for all publishing. And we are just recording in this publishing database what was object, what object was published or unpublished, at what time, by who, and for what system. So of course, all of these will be for the UT DAMs, um, but in the future, if we ever have other projects that need publishing, we, we plan to also use this publishing database for that. Um, and so then at that point, the user will receive an email that it's been successfully published and everything is good to go and it's on the front end. So are there any questions? Uh, hi, this is Jason from Texas State. I, I had a question. Um, so you don't use the uh, the UI from the Islandora, you use the Blacklight to, um, is, did, is there a particular reason why you did it that way or? Wait, 
So we have, so our back end is using the Glendora front end. That is where every, all the curators are going through and making sure that the metadata is what they want it to be and the image looks right. And then um, we decided not to go with the Islandora or Drupal front end. We decided to just use Blacklight because uh, we, I would assume, um, I wasn't there for that decision making, but we didn't really need something uh, that heavy weight for the front end. Um, I think Larry's okay. on here if you have other thoughts. <laughs> I see. Yeah, thanks, Tori. Great presentation. Um, is uh, on the interface between Blacklight and IIIF, is it Blacklight using IIIF or is it uh, a content specific viewer inside of Blacklight like Mirador or would you know yeah. what is, yeah, that's the question. Yes, Mirador is using the IIIF API, yeah. All right, thank you so much, Tori. I'm gonna do the clapping reaction. <laughs> It's been really cool to see that that project go through from, um, you know, however many years of the SCSI fuck to get that back end and finally the front end. And I've missed the last couple of, so uh, I'm, I'm so excited to see it. So thanks.